To quote a great Episcopalian, Robin Williams, Good morning, Nativity! All right, let's try it again. Good morning, Nativity! Good morning! All right, amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are excited you're here today. So this is what the inside of the church looks like. We welcome you today here in person and also our live stream online community using our brand new cameras that we bought in November right up here. So we're very excited to welcome you. I've got some people who are going to text me if things are going south. I don't like saying going south because I'm from the south. If things are going north, we're going to say it that way. So I would like to direct your attention to your top of your bulletin. And I know y'all can read, but I'm going to read it for our folks at home, which you can also download the bulletin at home by going to our website, nativityscottsdale.org, clicking join us, and you can open up the bulletin and also get a large, a, a large print bulletin if you like. So this is that legal stuff we have to put on our thing. All church activities may be internet streamed, video recorded, and photographed for church uses. Entry onto the church campus or into any church building constitutes consent to be streamed, videotaped, or photographed for church purposes. So I wanted to let you know that in case you have a particular issue about it. Uh, if you do, you might want to move to the back uh, because the cameras pick up a lot, uh, which you can watch later if you want by going to our website, nativityscottsdale.org, click join us, and then you can see, you know, maybe five or six hours after the service, the actual service, which is from on our YouTube channel. Or you can just go to YouTube and go Nativity General, search for that, and you'll find it. I want to let you know about our offertory. We're not going to be passing the plate in order to keep with COVID restrictions, so the offering plate jar is right here. So as you come forward, that's an opportunity for you to drop in your offering. Uh, also, because of the COVID restrictions, we will not have any singing. That's why we have the cantors. And you'll notice on the screen, whenever there's a sung part, it'll say sung by the cantors. So, the joy of moving inside is to be inside and have air conditioning that the, the thing that we might miss some is singing. But you can hum under your mask. I'm not the mask or humming police, so that's okay. So now I'd like to ask us to prepare for worship as we listen to our prelude, Fantasia, and E flat major with our music, music director, Tyler Pym, and our cantors. Thank you.
Christ is risen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Plans the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. mystery establish the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the blessing. Today's first lesson is a reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is 133, found on page 787 in the Book of Common Prayer. Well, we, we will read it responsibly by half first. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like fine oil upon the head. Upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing. The second lesson is a reading from John's first letter. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands. Concerning the word of life, 
this life was revealed. And we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Lord, is risen All right! You're not the frozen chosen. We're not the frozen chosen. Awesome. Well, I am so glad that we can say that and that we're back inside our church building and air conditioning since last December. Boy, what a year 2020 has been. I'm so glad it's 2021. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. Now, I know we did this last week, but some of you may have been watching from home. We've got a lot of new folks today. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you. Now turn to your other neighbor on the other side and say, it's so good to be back at church. Amen. Last Sunday on Easter Sunday, I preached about God's love and how we interpret that love and share it with our neighbor in the world. As Presiding Bishop Michael Curry is fond of saying, if it's not about love, it's not about God. If it's not about love, it's not about God. If we keep this concept in our heart and in our soul, then we really understand what our faith is about. And then we also really understand who God is. Today's Gospel from John chapter 20 is always the same passage on this appointed Sunday. The second Sunday of Easter, or what some call Low Sunday, referring to a lower attendance after the great and mighty feast day of Easter Sunday, but I don't know about y'all, but I don't see any low attendance today. We're all our way out in Christopher Hall. Thanks for being here on Low Sunday. Often on this Sunday, we talk about Doubting Thomas, which you heard read. But today, I'd like to share with you about another part of the gospel, which is in front of you, which reads, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, let me give you a little bit of context about this gospel passage. This, this gospel story just happens just hours after Jesus' resurrection, so most likely it's on Sunday evening. And Jesus shares with the apostles about the very human need to receive forgiveness and to give forgiveness. When Jesus tells his apostles to gather to, quote, receive the Holy Spirit, Father, by letting them know about being able to forgive the sins of others, this is the story which gave the authority to the apostles and future priests through the centuries to be able to forgive the sins of others, or what we today call the ability for priests to pronounce absolution to a penitent. Now, we don't say the confession during Eastertide because we just finished Lent, right? So the focus is not a penitential nature of Easter. However, if we were to do that, or in about six weeks, when we resume it, Father Wayne and I, which either one of us, whoever's presiding, which today is Father Wayne, would pronounce the absolution to the whole body gathered. When we receive the Holy Spirit as people of God, whether it's Sunday night as the apostles did, or on Pentecost when the rest of the church received it, then we realize that we have the capacity to be more of a spiritual being than we thought capable. Then we realize that ego and, and pride and vanity have no place when we receive the Holy Spirit. And so it is with forgiveness. We leave ego and pride and vanity at the foot of the cross so we can do the hard work of forgiveness. And as we all know, being human, we just don't flip a switch of forgiveness, but forgiveness is hard, difficult work, and it's an involved process. 
Desmond Tutu thought of forgiveness as so important that he even wrote a book with the title. He, he titled his book, No Future Without Forgiveness. And Tutu says that forgiveness is something that we must do. And Jesus also. We must forgive seven times seventy. There is no future without forgiveness for a Christian, to quote Desmond Tutu. So it was so important on that day of the resurrection that night for Jesus to share that message with his apostles that it points to that as an important element on the same day he was resurrected. Now 2020, anybody alive in 1918, 1919? 2020 was like a year like no other. We saw the world turned upside down. People were irritable and afraid, including myself, including me. Plans of weddings and trips and birthdays and anniversaries and all other things were canceled or postponed. You might have had a loved one who died of COVID. Or someone you know who is sick and is still having those repercussions. A couple of priest friends of mine here in this diocese still cannot place a glass of water on a counter because of their perception from COVID. Last summer we found ourselves in a, in a very contentious election year and, and the economy went to tank. The, the people lost their jobs during the pandemic. People were afraid. Wearing masks became political as people struggled to understand what was science and what was politics. We witnessed the murder of a black man on live television and the years of pain and oppression surfaced to the streets. It was not the finest year in terms of human behavior. Last year we reacted with grief and anger and sadness and shock and outrage and you name it. It was a year of emotion and fear some are still dealing with the mounds of grief and how to get through the grief. Many people believe that we, we never get over grief. Why would we? We don't want to forget the memory of our friend or loved one. We get through it with Christ. Through the valley of the shadow of death. Many relationships were hurt last year. Some permanently. Forgiveness needs to happen. Maybe 2021 can be a, a year of forgiveness. We need to ask for forgiveness of the ones we have hurt. Or to forgive those who seek our forgiveness. Just a week ago today at the, at the tomb on the early morning, we were reminded of God's love and forgiveness for us. Each of us has received God's forgiveness. And yet, if we're honest, let's ask ourselves, is there someone in your life from whom you need to seek forgiveness? Someone that you've hurt, that you need to make restitution to, or be reconciled to? Or is there someone who has hurt or offended you? Does that person need to make restitution to you and seek forgiveness and reconciliation from you? From the Gospel of John today, when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Again, the point is Jesus is saying this to all his disciples, not just his apostles. It's the work of the whole community to forgive each other's sins. And here, community is key. The early Christians will need to rely on each other just as we rely on each other. And some scholars indicate that the forgiveness of sins must be understood as the spirit-empowered mission of continuing Jesus' work in the world. 
There we have it. It's plain to us. The forgiveness of sins must be understood as the spirit-empowered mission of continuing Jesus' work in the world. Therefore, if we do not forgive each other or others in our lives, how can we continue the work that Christ has given us to do? Now, it would be rare for anyone in the 21st century not to have some forgiveness work to do. Whatever it might be, we're able to move through it with the help of Jesus. And it's no accident that today, the second Sunday of Easter, the collect that, that we heard read, is today's theme. And listen to it again as I read it. A mighty and everlasting God who in the Paschal Mystery established the, the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. May show forth in our lives what we profess by our faith. This second Sunday of Easter is about the new covenant of reconciliation. We have been reconciled with God in Christ, and now we go and do the same with our neighbor. And I want to share a, a study with you from Wisconsin. And I, as many of you know, and, and it's not everybody maybe, but I've always been interested in the field of psychology. After I was a, a banker, bank manager, bank officer, loan officer at Bank of America, I left, I left that, that work in early, the early 90s. And I took pre-doctoral courses to prepare for a doctoral program in psychology. And I came across this great book right here published by the American Psychological Association, the, the gold standard, entitled Forgiveness is a Choice, a step-by-step -step process for resolving anger and restoring hope. Forgiveness is a choice. In this book, the author and others conducted a human development study at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1985 delving deeply into forgiveness and why some people forgive and why others do not. And during the study, they, they thought it was so important, they founded the International Forgiveness Institute. And the author posits that we can find freedom from anger, from resentment, from bitterness, bitterness and the self-destructive behavior patterns that accompany them if we're willing to enter into the process of forgiveness. It's possible that we might have inherited a family tradition of anger and bitterness. You can inherit that, but we don't have to pass it on to our children or grandchildren. All of that stuff can end with us. The study in Madison, Wisconsin occurred over 15 years, and what they found is the first step in working toward forgiveness is recognizing that you might be angry. And then as part of forgiveness and reconciliation, people examine the causes of the anger and how they got to their current situation. The psychologists administering the study were able to come to some conclusions after collecting data from hundreds and hundreds of people in the study. And they learned that, for, people learned that forgiving as a forgiver gives people the freedom to overcome an issue that might be related to anger without internalizing the anger or becoming addicted to anger or becoming an angry person. Yes, people can become addicted to their anger. When something is a pattern for many years, it's difficult to break, but it's not impossible. Forgiveness is not a bargain or negotiation. It's not a magic trick that allows us to control other people. 
Forgiveness is a risk because we don't always know what the results will be. Sometimes the person we forgive is transformed. Sometimes there's no change. But the forgiver cannot control or change the other person. Now, having lived in the South, we, we try to do that a lot in the South. We have that passive aggressive, bless her heart. Y'all ever heard of that? Anybody ever use that? Bless her heart. Over and over, the study that clear, it was clear that the forgiveness is more about healing and wholeness for the forgiver rather than the recipient of forgiveness. And even though anger and resentment don't just disappear overnight, by entering into the process of forgiveness, the anger and resentment is lessened over time. Another example in the study was regard to what is something called conditional forgiveness. Some people are willing to forgive only if they can be assured that people will, that they forgive will change. And so since no one person can change another person, there must be an element of understanding that sometimes or oftentimes people will not change. And then we are the ones holding the bag of anger and resentment. The essential thing in the Wisconsin study was that people would learn that the first person that forgiveness changes is the person doing the forgiving. Forgiveness gives us the freedom to deal with things without internalizing anger or disappointment. Forgiveness gives us freedom. It unlocks the chains that bind us. It unlocks the jail cell that we find ourselves in. And when we come out of that jail cell, with forgiveness opening the jail cell, hopefully we can leave anger and resentment behind as we come out. I imagine each of us at some point or other in our lives has been a captive of our own anger, keeping us from forgiving. And very importantly, as I said, forgiveness is a process. Simply saying, I forgive you, is usually not enough. Although the words are said, the angry feelings often return. And if they return, they're not going to go anywhere until we deal with them. People in the study in Wisconsin realize that forgiveness does not remove all the pain, but that after forgiveness, the remaining pain is bearable. The other scientific example in this great book I recommend is uh, forgiveness. In this book, Forgiveness is a Choice. The, uh, the other study was by a Canadian psychiatrist named R.C. Hunter. And he found that those who are anxious can experience an increased inner peace through forgiveness. Those who are depressed or intensely angry showed a significant reduction in those symptoms. Additionally, Dr. Hunter found that people who forgave had feelings of bitterness and resentment toward people who had hurt them, that those feelings were reduced. Forgiveness gives us freedom. Christ gives us freedom. Christ helps us to forgive, to unlock the chains that bind us. Sometimes our anger is so fierce that anger is our jailer. Or we drink the poison of anger and resentment, hoping that the other person who offended us gets sick. That's why Jesus wants us to give him the anger and pain and sorrow, the sorrow of hurt, and put it all at the foot of the cross. So in this Wisconsin case study, they found that humans who need to forgive must have two things. Humans who need to forgive must have two things. A readiness to forgive and an openness to love. A readiness to forgive. Remember, it's a process. It takes time. A readiness to forgive and an openness to love. 
When we go through the forgiveness process, we become psychologically healthier. Remember our college we just heard? Grant that all have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. And forgiveness is a part of reconciliation on this day that we focus on reconciliation. Christ gave his life so that the world could be reconciled to God. One may forgive and not reconcile, since that's a process too. But one can never truly reconcile without some form of forgiving taking place. Now I could go on for another hour about this, but we've got to get on with our communion and the rest of the service. But forgiveness is a choice, and what I think I'm going to do is that I'm going to offer a class on forgiveness later this year, so those interested can discuss these issues further in depth, looking at the overlap of psychology and theology and the stories in the Bible about forgiveness. Now, I don't know all y'all, but, but many of you may know I'm a former teacher, and I like to give a little bit of homework to th keep us going during the week. By the way, how many of you did your homework from last Sunday? How many of you went out and loved someone you didn't know? That was the homework. Now, in all my years of preaching, 25, I've never had anyone not raise their hand. All right, so y'all know what I'm going to do next week, right? I'm going to come ask you did your homework. Loving someone in the eyes of Christ. You know, it's funny because I appreciate y'all being honest with me because I used to teach high school. And when I asked the kids, the sophomores, when I taught world religion, oh, did you do your homework? Everybody raised their hand. And then I was like, okay, come on up here and tell me the difference theologically and ritually between Hinduism and Buddhism in terms of marriage and funeral rites. I'm trying to Google it. I used to walk around the classroom and I could tell who was focusing and who was playing Minesweeper. Walking around, all of a sudden, boom, escape. Oh, Mr. Smith, okay, come on up here and tell us all about the Baha'i religion. Theology, history, ritual. Uh, Mr. McComas, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, okay. It's funny being a teacher. How many of you teachers, by the way, are teachers in your career? You know we have eyes in the back of our head, right? We, know, we can see what's going on behind us. So here's our homework. During these great 50 days of Easter, we got 50 days to do the homework. Can you forgive one person? Or ask one person to forgive you? For when we hold on to the wrongs of others that others have done to us, we retain those sins, to use the language from the gospel. When we retain those sins or hurts done to us, we are the ones that carry the burden, not Christ. But Jesus asks us to give him the burden so he can carry it. I had a recent conversation with an incredibly wise woman in her 90s who grew up in Jamaica. And she said, if you cannot let God in, you can't let go of stuff from the past. We need God to help with letting go. If we cannot let God in, we can't let go of stuff from the past. We need God to help with letting go. For in Easter, all are made one in Christ, and all are reconciled to God, even those we don't like or who have hurt us deeply. And this is what forgiveness is for us. It frees us, allows us to experience the joy and the peace which passes all understanding, to quote St. Paul. To give that burden away that we carry. To forgive others through Christ and in Christ and with Christ. It also helps our personality. To quote Yale Law Professor Stephen Carter in his book, Civility, Manners, Morals, and the Etiquette of Democracy, 
He says we forgive for our own good because forgiveness helps us not to distort our best selves with hatred. We forgive for our own good because forgiveness helps us not to distort our best selves with hatred. We all know what can happen when we have unresolved issues and don't have closure. It can eat away at us. Sometimes it can turn into a negative force in our bodies or our psyche. We can become bitter. Sometimes we try to escape, and so we turn to alcohol or drugs or another addiction or gambling or you fill in the blank because it all seems too painful. But I remember a few years ago in Dallas when I lived there, <clears throat> I was attending a lecture on Jungian psychology at the Jung Society of North Texas, one of my interests, Jungian psychology. And the Jungian psychologist mentioned that 70% of our physical health, 70% is related to psychological health and psychological issues. Wow. 70% of our physical health is connected to psychology. It's time to make an appointment with a therapist or come see Martha, come see Father Wayne, come see me, come talk. We're free, by the way. You don't have to pay us for that. Psychologists, you got to pay. But one of the most important issues for our psychological health and spiritual health is forgiveness. Christ wants us to be whole, to live in the joy of the resurrection and the joy of reconciliation. So can you begin the process of the Great 50 Days this week of trying to forgive someone or asking for forgiveness? Can you also give that burden to Christ at the foot of the cross? Can we or will we follow the Easter message of the new covenant of reconciliation? Will we forgive? Will we give, give the gift of forgiveness to ourselves and to another so that our relationships with others and with ourselves can be resurrected in God's eternal love and joy this season of Easter and always? Amen and Alleluia. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, for all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God of God. Prayers of the People are from the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. 
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We honor and pray for our indigenous neighbors. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We pray for your companion diocese of Mexico. In the Anglican communion cycle of prayer, we pray for the church of the province of the Indian Ocean. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Christopher's in Sun City. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God. Oh, we're not doing that. I apologize. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Happy second Sunday of Easter to you today. We're so excited you're here. If you're visiting us for the first time, we have a little card in the pew pocket in front of you, or right around there. If you'd like to fill it out, give us your name, information, your uh, uh, email, if you like. Our sermons come out, the services come out Tuesdays at 2, and the email blast from the church comes out Fridays at 2 p.m. in order to see what's going on in all the activities. I uh, wanted to let you know that uh, we have a book sale today, right down this uh, aisle that way, the Longley Cook Children's Center. We have tons of books that are uh, fiction. And further down in the Bethlehem Rooms in the northwest corner of the church, we have nonfiction. We've got golf, sports, World War II, maps, military history, uh, what else we have? Religion, theology, uh, Americana, etc. This is from the estate of Marty Christopher. And so we will have these here this week, and then we are going to take the things that are not uh, sold. And you can give a, um, if you can, a um, free will offering that will go to help kids for summer camp at our summer camp and conference center, Chapel Rock in Prescott, which has been around since 1934 which is owned by the Diocese of Arizona Episcopal Diocese. That will help kids with their uh, summer camp tuition expenses. We have a summer camp up there all summer. As a matter of fact, Mandy's going to be one of the counselors. And we also have a camp for kids who are, parents who are incarcerated and children with disabilities. So please help yourself. And then once all, after today or tomorrow, we're going to then take a lot of these to veterans' homes, et cetera. 
I think we have a couple of announcements folks lined up here. Oh, by the way, real quick. So Marty's funeral, Christopher Hall, Marty Christopher, their picture's right there on the wall. That'll be a week, well, next Saturday, sorry, a week from yesterday, next Saturday, the 17th, 11 a.m., here inside the church. Carrie, do you have an announcement, ma'am? Hello, I'm Carrie Wagner, and um, I'm on the Outreach Committee, and I'm in charge of Save the Family. And every year we collect Mother's Day purses and toiletries, jewelry, scarves to take down to save the family. Um, I have a box outside, and I have a couple boxes inside the church, and I'm collecting them until next Sunday. So if you would like to donate, I'll be in the lobby outside after church if you have questions, or I come by every day and check to see if anyone donates. Thank you. Hi guys, um, so I am admittedly a little out of breath from our uh, very active game of Four Corners outside just now. So I'm um, super excited that um, we are back today in person, especially with our youth and children. You may have heard us outside. Uh, Children's Chapel starting at 10 o'clock again every Sunday right outside on the front porch. And guys, today is just a little act of kindness and encouragement. Our kids left you guys a bunch of messages on the sidewalk. So make sure that as you head out that you take time to look down and I promise it's going to make you smile and carry you into your week in a, in a great sunshiny way. Um, youth group is right after this service. We're going to meet again right out front at 11. I guess it won't be 11. We're just when we're done in here. Um, I also want to point out that uh, Vacation Bible School registration is now on the website, so you can find that under the Learn tab for any students who are interested. And that includes not just participants, which we're so excited for, but also any older students who want to volunteer as counselors. So, yeah, just get in touch with me if you have any questions about our youth and children's programs gearing back up. We're just so glad that you got together. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Now, Mandy's right. I don't normally preach that long for y'all visiting, so just don't, don't escape next week. I, I don't normally preach that, but I had to share that with you today. It is a life-saving, life-changing topic and, a, and book, and I recommend it. Uh, let's see. Do we have any birthdays today or anniversaries? People like to come forward for their birthday or their anniversary blessing. Happy birthday. Let's give a round of applause to our birthday folks. Happy birthday to you. Anniversary. We have an anniversary prayer up on the screen. Come on over, Paul and Marianne. Tell everybody how many years it's been, when you got married, and where you got married. Put you on the spot. Should I let you talk to her? Married 10 years ago yesterday. Jimmy Cincinnati, oh, 10 years ago yesterday. Awesome, awesome. Would you guys hold hands? I'm going to wrap my soul. Did your priest do this for you? Awesome. All right, let's, let's pray together in unison for, for uh, and I thought there was another anniversary today. Okay. Let's pray together. 
Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon these your servants. Leave them to our each other and with you. Give them grace that together love and ability with care for one another. Swing them of all the days. And finally, bring them to that holy table where with those they love, they will feast forever in our heavenly home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Happy anniversary, let's thank Paul and Mary. Just want to tell you a little bit about communion. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Laura, would you go down to the, I think it's slide 91, the prayer for spiritual communion. We have folks who are watching on live who won't be here to have communion in person. We have a prayer for spiritual communion that uh, they can say and pray. This is it right here. I want y'all to look at that and realize that we are connected to a large community across uh, several states. Our snowbirds and other folks. Everyone is welcome to the Lord's table. What we're doing is we're doing bread and wheat wafers. So we're going to have standing stations. So Father Wayne will be right here. And then I will be right over here. And as you come forward, just put your hands out like that. For the uh, wafer, if you want to gluten free, just put your hands and palms down. And then you consume it when you get back to your seat. And we're going to start there. We're going to start with you. So you're going to start. You're going to come down around here. This girl will follow. Jeff will follow Sandy. You get you some hand sanitizer. You can drop off your huge check in the offering plate. And then you all can come on up here. And then we're going to start. This is Jeff. Brian's going to start here. Come around here. Same thing. And then the wing. Uh, we don't have the wine. I'm not able to have it at this time because of the common cup and COVID and so forth. Maybe in a few months when you have everybody vaccinated or herd immunity, right? Kids, kids, we got to think about the kids. Um, but all are welcome to receive for your spiritual nourishment this week as you do your homework. Y'all, 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 y'all,
I knew there was another anniversary. They're at home watching Tom and Nancy Bleasdale. Yesterday, Nancy's in charge of her Ultra Guild. I don't mess with the Ultra Guild. And um, Tom's in charge of the ushers. 56 years yesterday. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Tom and Nancy, sorry about that. Let us speak the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say,
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Thank <laughs> you. 